Not to disappoint, but October's What's Neat is going to be the RPM meet that took place in Collinsville, Illinois. But I want to reassure all the viewers of the show that we have plenty of how-to videos coming up. You've seen the two segments in September. Mitchell Bifodin built that wonderful tarp load. And of course, James Regeer showed us his great grain elevator. Coming up in November, we've got an LED segment. And in December, January, and the rest of the winter, we'll have plenty of how-to videos for Model Railroad Hobbyist Magazine's What's Neat. So with that, guys, enjoy October's Prototype Modelers Meet show. The What's Neat Show is sponsored by Caboose, sharing our passion for trains since 1938. This is What's Neat for October 2019. I'm your host, Ken Patterson, and this month we've got a fantastic show in that this is your ticket to go to the St. Louis RPM meet. Now this show has been covered by What's Neat. It's been covered like no other company in the model press, whereas we've taken and interviewed manufacturers and various models and we've actually seen this show grow year after year. This month, we look at and talk to seven different manufacturers, one historical society, and three gentlemen that absolutely built fantastic models that were on display at the show. Plus, when I talk with the manufacturers, a lot of these guys don't clock out at 5 p.m. after work. They have model railroads and the hobby passion at their own homes. And so therefore, we get to see three fantastic layouts from three of the manufacturers that have never really been seen by the public before, and it's a real treat this month on What's Neat. Also, if you'd like to know more about about the RPM meet. We had about 60 people here in the What's Neat studios that night of July 27th, and we shot show number 83, What's Neat. So you can find that on the What's Neat podcast. Check it out through our What's Neat Facebook page or check out show number 83 by simply typing What's Neat, show number 83, into YouTube. We had about, like I said, 60 people here, and Butch Eiler shot some beautiful drone footage of the events that we had going on on the outside. We had a nice bonfire, a lot of people just relaxed, just enjoying model railroad conversation and watching the Garden Railroad run. I'd like to thank Caboose out in Lakewood, Colorado for helping sponsor the What's Neat show for Model Railroad Hobbyist Magazine. They've started a new endeavor, whereas they are now purchasing estates and train collections for cash. So that if you've got any gently used trains or a large collection that you may want to sell, contact them through their website at mycaboose.com or simply call them on the phone at 303-777-6766 and they'll be happy to talk about what it is you have and offer you cash for your estate and or collection. So with that, let's continue on with the rest of October's What's Neat, the Railroad Prototype Modelers Meet in St. Louis, Missouri. So as I alluded to in the introduction to this show, we are at the 13th annual St. Louis Prototype Modelers Meet here in Collinsville, Illinois, and I've got Daniel Coombs with me. This is his very first prototype show, and Joshua, you've been to a few, but we both got to watch Daniel for the first time. Tell me about this, Daniel. What have you seen? I, you know what, it's a com camaraderie of model railroading. I have seen so many aspects that uh, it's, it's, it's phenomenal what I'm seeing. From the, you know, the guys who want the super detail on the prototype to just the average Joe that just wants to talk trains. It's, it's been a great show. I mean, there's also a few vendors here and I have bought a few things. So, <laughs> and uh, like, I, like Ken said, it's my first prototype show years before I wasn't able to come. Now I am and you were right. This, this, is, this is a phenomenal show. I mean, there's, awesome. no, there's no right or wrong on how you're doing things here. Right. It's just, just show and tell. There's a lot of told. people here. Most people I've seen ever on a show. Joshua, you've been buying anything? Uh, I have two loads in the car and probably two more loads to go. So shh, Rock don't and tell roll. anybody. And then we'll be doing the podcast. That's right. The What's Neat All This right. Week podcast on the bluff. So you'll be able to watch that show as well. So we're covering it on What's Neat and both on the podcast. So at this point, let's get our interviews here of the various manufacturers at this show and enjoy this great event. Thank you. 
Hi, we're here with Chris Brimley from Exact Rail, and we're uh, checking out his wares for uh, for his stuff here at the RPM meet. Uh, Chris, how are you today? I'm doing great, thanks Josh. And what new things do you have to uh, tell us about? So our newest product that we have, it's actually will be making landfall this Sunday, is the Evans 5277 boxcar. Uh, it'll be coming in both HO and N scale. And it'll be, when we release it, it'll have six all new paint schemes that we've never done on this car before. Uh, it'll be available in the Ferdinand Railway, Ontario Northland, Canadian National, Mississippian Railway, um, Sault Ste. Marie, which is a Wisconsin Central subsidiary, and uh, Laurenburg and Southern in G GATX scheme. Uh, also in HO, we'll have it in an undecorated kit. Well, very nice, very nice. And how much are those going to run? Um, I don't have a price quite yet. We'll be announcing that here soon once we officially release them in about two to three weeks. Oh, great, great. So are one of these uh, are going to run on your railway at home? No, my layout is uh, a 1955 New York, whereas these cars are a 79 built, so they're, they're too new for my layout. So. Uh, my layout is an isolated switching terminal in 1955 Manhattan and uh, it's rail marine operations and so as much as I would like to have this on there it's 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 far too new. So marine operations you have docks and different ports and stuff? Um, it's a small layout and so every the cars come in via car floats and um, I do have a few piers on the layout and then a few industries that are a main line or uh, on the mainland uh, or I guess the island since it's Manhattan. Um, and so the cars come in, serve the various industries, uh, like I have a Nabisco American Can Company uh, and a few LCL warehouses. So they work those industries and then everything goes back off of car float to uh, the other side of the Hudson to over to Jersey. I think that's my new favorite thing is switching and using those small layouts to get a lot of cars from one side to the other. So are you uh, modeling in HO? No, it's actually an N scale layout and the layout's only one by seven feet. It's very small. Wow, so that would fit in a closet. That's all pretty neat. Almost, yeah, it almost could. When when I built it, uh, my family lived in just a, just a very small home, and so we didn't. That was as big as I could go. I'm now in a bigger place now, and so I could expand on it, which would be modeling the other side of the river. So, wow, that's another uh, uh, a big thing for a lot of people is switching to N scale, so they can get more in a smaller space. Yeah. Well. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate the interview and nice seeing you. Yeah, you're absolutely welcome. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. I'm at the Central Valley booth with Jeff Parker, and we all know his father, Jack Parker, with that famous, beautiful layout. And we've run pictures of it before. I always loved his water. But his son has filled his shoes with grace and has kept this company going with new products all the time. Dude, tell me about the work you do every day. The work I do every day is just a man of a million hats, and I'm trying to build molds at the same time I'm answering the phone, and it, it's crazy insane. And uh, my dad was a fantastic modeler. He's a fantastic artist, and there was nothing that he would do that was not good. He did things so good that none of us could keep up with him. And, uh, we worked very hard at that, trying to outdo my dad, and that's my motivation to keep going and keep building things and see what I can do and see how I can make it better. Now, last year you came out to my studios and you built that single track, long, 200 foot truss bridge, and we showed a lot of video of that. And what I was so impressed with how methodical you were, how calm you were, and you just understood the process of repetition. Well, Tell me yeah. about building these beautiful bridges, how easy it really is. It is actually very easy. You have to have patience. And one of the key factors that I've been telling people this year is 
you have to limit yourself in time. You can't just expect to build this in one day or one weekend for that matter. I, I try to limit myself to my limits and you need to learn what your limits are. And uh, my limit is about two hours and then I need to step away for a whole day and then come back the next day or the day after. That's really good that you know that because that does keep you from getting burned out, doesn't it? Yes, it does in a big way. And it allows me, of course, since I wear so many hats running Central Valley, that it, and my wife is always working on new packaging ideas and hitting me with ideas That's that are great. off the hook in some ways. And in other ways, it's, it's just awesome to be working together with another model railroader. Well, dude, I can say this for the hobbyist, man. Thank you so much for what you do for all of us. You make it easy to get across our rivers and our valleys with some of the most beautiful structures on the market. Yeah, and we're always working very hard to improve it, and our goal is to satisfy the customer. You're awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm standing with Andre Stone and Matt Robbins. Yes, Is that sir. correct? Absolutely. And you guys have got a beautiful modular layout here. Tell me about this gorgeous layout. All right, so we're the Ohio Valley Sipping and Switching Society. So we're in about our 12th, yeah, maybe a little right. bit older than that, 12th, 13th year of operation here. So we're probably on show 42, 43 in our history. Yep, we okay. are, we're almost so, we're trying to hit the 50. Yeah, but absolutely. you said the layout was started around 2007. Um, yeah, 2008. Um, and we started with the, what's that, North Carolina Sipping and Switching uh, uh, Society. Sipping and Switching Society, Society of North, North Carolina. Carolina. Thank you. It's beautiful, the HO scale buildings and everything that you guys have done here. How many members do you have in this group? How about 12 right now? Yeah, so. yeah. 12 plus one or two in and out people come participate every once in a while. Well, your layout is beautiful. How many, sh you said that you've done like 40 something shows? Uh, we're trying to get up to about 50. I think our 50 is coming up next year. So yeah, yeah we've be, been doing a while. I think we're targeting our 50th show is probably gonna be the first one we do in 2021 actually. Right the now. scenery is exquisite. Now what website, you guys said you're out of Cincinnati, correct? Yeah. What website would we go to to find you guys? Have you got a Facebook page is, or is any sort of internet? Yeah. We do have Facebook presence. Okay. Um, updating only a few times a year to update people with our events and stuff. A lot of postings, if we do them, is going to be actually on the North Carolina page. Okay, so how do I get to that? What website do we want to do? or just We a... want to do the Facebook page for okay, sure. So that gets the Facebook. most attention, absolutely. Okay, and look up the name again? Look up Sipping and Switching Society of North Carolina or Ohio Valley Sipping and Switching Society. On Facebook, isn't On that Facebook, amazing? Yeah. All right guys, thank you so much for a few minutes of time. It's a beautiful layout. All right, thank, thank you. you. For this segment of What's Neat, I'm with Rick Dakota Kemp. And Rick, you are one of the most magnificent hand painters of graffiti and murals on freight cars that I have ever seen. And I'm not just saying it, great respect for your work, brother. Tell me about your passion for what you do. Basically, I just, it all started out a long time ago. I was at home, I built my son a layout. It was just a standard HO, four bay. And he put Tonka trucks next to HO scale cars that drove me nuts. So I built my own layout, details on everything. The train did not look right. And I realized after a while that the train, the train was nice, the layout was perfect, but modern era, it didn't have any of the artwork that was on what you see, it just looked out of place. So I started putting little pieces on here and there. I got pictures of cars and tried to match it and over time I just, you know, slowly got better at what I was doing and here I am doing this. And you don't use an airbrush, you're pretty much a hand artist, aren't you, with brushes? It's very fine. Every, everything from an extremely fine brush to, I've done 
weathering work on cars using actually paint rollers and paint brushes from Menards. Amazing. You never know what you're going to find that's going to work. Is there a favorite piece over the years that you've done? I've had so many favorite pieces, but every time I go to a show, somehow somebody goes home with them. True that. Now you made a beautiful uh, George Bush Memorial. This was a Union Pacific train where they actually hauled the president in the train across the country. Tell us a little bit about that. I actually had uh, the Walther's baggage car at home when Bush had died. And as soon as they started rolling the train and actually you could see how the train was set up with the glass doors on it, the casket inside. I went and I took mine, I actually cut the doors off of it. I put wooden floor in. I mean, I can actually grab this one and open it and show you right now. You're doing it right now because we're showing B-roll of you doing it right now. We're looking at the inside as you're pulling off that roof and look at those LEDs just like right, Just like that one right there. Right, you got LEDs in there to light it up. It, it's LEDs inside of it and it's wired into, I put the correct trucks on it. Uh, Walther sells a two axle truck. I've modified the frame bottom for it, run direct wires to it. It has the wood floor, the interior is painted, the casket I had custom made for me, hand painted the casket and hand painted the figure. Now the guys who were inside of it standing watch changed throughout its trip. And when people have asked for them, I've actually, you know, I've had some guys who are Marines and asked me to make the guy inside a Marine, so they, you know, I have pictures of the proper uniform. That's fantastic. It's every every wow. piece of hand. I mean, there's so many different ways that you can get that car and it still be prototypical for 315 on the afternoon of that day. It's not your number one car for running at any time because it only existed for about an hour. But uh, I've taken the same car and I've cut it where it was just the half doors for excursion service. You know, full interior, I have, you know, passengers inside of it. You know, 4014 is out right now and it has the experienced baggage car, which I've painted some. I mean, I, I saw I, that, that car is beautiful. Did you make that decal? How did you get that decal like uh, that? Or did you hand paint that? That is actually, uh, Circus City made the decal for me and he's done a wonderful job on many of the, you know, little, if I need numbers made where it was actually from a locomotive, I'll actually have him make them for me. That's awesome. And then I'll hand paint a bunch of the other pieces on it. The Art Lockman, which is following 14 right now, I've done that with full interior. And the experience, I actually painted a bunch of them in the hotel room last night. Wow. The vent, the vent fan works perfect if you're ever looking to, you don't want to use your garage, your wife's going to get pissed, it's happened to be before, don't ask about the pink fridge. Hotel, $100 will save you a lot of trouble. Dude, you are one of the most magnificent graffiti and, and artists overall that I've ever seen. And I'm not just saying that, but tell us where everybody, we can't show them everything you've got on this video. You're on Facebook. Direct us to what page to find your work. If you're on Facebook, you can always go to my page. I accept anybody as long as you're... What's the name? What's it called? It's, it's Rick Dakota Kemp on Facebook. I go, you know, in the art world, I go by Ducky. Ducky, that's this guy, right? Long story, I, 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 do, I do motorcycle rallies and everything else, and there was a time I actually took a duck that had gotten sick to a motorcycle rally. You'll never believe that is the number one chick magnet you have ever seen. Okay. So, everyone started calling me Ducky. As you can see, it, it stuck. Dude, man. Ducky, this is the best hobby in the world, and we appreciate what you're doing to show off your work for us today. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot.
So I'm standing here with John Lee, and he's the Badger representative, and you've been doing that for a long time, John. But tell me, what is your favorite airbrush for a model railroader to use on their freight cars? Well, um, what I got in my hand today, Ken, is the uh, Badger 105 Patriot. This is a double action uh, gravity feed airbrush, and it's all brass construction. It's made in Chicago, Illinois, Franklin Park to be exact. And uh, it's a, a dynamite airbrush. It uh, uh, covers all aspects of airbrushing. So if you want to weather, you can weather with it. You can paint whole cars or engines with it. So it does a good job. It looks beautiful. Is that a double action or a single? Double action. That's what you really need for your train. So you can control the airflow yes. and the amount of paint with one finger. That's correct. That's correct. And, and what's this called again? This is the 105 Patriot. Good. So it's a, it's a dynamite brush, well constructed, and with Badger's lifetime guarantee, if you have any problem, you can send your brush back and we'll repair it free of charge. All we do is we ask that the customer pay for the return postage. That's good customer service. So what do you say you come out to the studio sometime and do a demonstration with this equipment? I'd be happy to. That's I'd be happy good. to. Thank you for it's asking. For a future show. But thank right. you, John Lee thank from you, Badger. Ken. Thank you, sir. All right, brother. I'm standing here with Dan Goins and Sam Dennehy, and that's the P87 guys. We've talked to you before on the show, but you've got a magnificent display that seems a little bit different this year. Dan, tell us about what is this club that you belong to? The 187 Vehicle Club is just focused on the HO vehicle um, because we have members that are involved in trucks and vehicles and military, hot rods, the whole gamut. Uh, it's kind of a subcategory of the Model Railroad hobby itself. Um, we had a great time last year. Uh, the reception was phenomenal. Awesome. And we decided to come back again. Uh, different. Some people are the same. Other are new members that came this time. Um, in addition, the promotion that we got off of our website and Facebook uh, encourage uh, Sylvan models to come all the way from Canada nice. because yes. he saw, saw them here. all this activity going on right. and he's going, you know, I need to be there. And our cameraman, Mike Buddy, works with them. I hear they're doing cars together. Yes. So, yes. yeah. So it, it was awesome. And then we've got um, several manufacturers that are creating new releases that are coming out real soon. So. We've got um, Caterpillar who's got a log loader. We've got a new bus model that's coming from Awesome Diecast. Just a lot of activity going on. That's really exciting. This hobby's not and dying, is it? one of our premier members. The I know, Sam Dennehy, we love you, man. The show, though, is the focus on the model builders. You know, there's very few other um, train shows that have front and center custom builders and model builders that um, it's not just the dioramas for uh, your layouts, which is fine, but for focusing on specific models, this is really the great show for that. So Dude, this is awesome. Now, into... Samuel, you've brought we've we've talked about some of your models on the show because Mike and Joshua love some of the right. stuff you do, the Mel's Diner, all that stuff. Now, you built a new diorama this year, and I'm going to show that off as you describe it. Well, it's like a uh, backlot studio uh, Hollywood um, layout. So we got the Munsters house, the Psycho house with the hotel, the Mills Diner, and now the Ghostbusters Firehouse, all on the same layout. Everything lights up, it's all ready to go with Ecto-1 uh, coming out of the Firehouse. Um, I kind of just wanted to put all my famous movie cars and TV cars on one layout, so when you saw it, you knew what it was. 
and it was something to display them all instead of just a table with no story behind it. This tells a story. Yeah. Wow, the Back to the Future DeLorean, it's flying, he's climbing, it's amazing. Yes. It's amazing. Yeah. Now, Sam, you know, the last time I had you on the show, I asked you, were we going to get Sam Dennehy to model HO scale something on, on track? And I think you might do that. Tell us what you've concluded. Okay, I've got the flying DeLorean. Now I'm working on getting another DeLorean to be on the tracks and fly into the future with that train, that steam engine, pushing it right off of the edge of the cliff. So the diorama will be right at that point that it's about to go into the future and the train's going to fly off the edge. But it'll just be still, uh, but it'll be there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it won't be emotional, but it'll just be still and you'll know what it is as soon as you see it. That's awesome. Well, listen, with you now doing a car that's going to have railroad wheels on it, let me also welcome you, Sam, to model railroading. Hey, thank you. I appreciate that. We all love you, brother. Thank you for showing off this great work to us. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm Daniel from What's Neat This Week, and today I got with Chris Palomares. And Chris, what are some new products you got coming out? Well, we just announced this Friday the SD45-2 and Conrail can opener, that's the blue scheme, mm -hmm. and then also the SD45-2 and the Santa Fe, which is the 5800 class, and that's a brand new uh, number series for us, and that's those are in the blue and yellow freight scheme. Okay. Now, I see behind us, we got some uh, new N-Scale products. You want to tell me a little bit about those SD70s? Yeah. Uh, we announced in HO and N-Scale the SD70 uh, standard cab locomotives, so we're doing them in Illinois Central, Norfolk Southern, Canadian National, and um, also Conrail too. Uh, there's a few other little gimmies in there. We're doing the Illinois Central with the yellow frame stripe. That's the one that you get to see right now that's still out on rails. You can actually see them roaming around in packs of three. So it's kind of like, welcome back to Illinois Central days. Um, also the patch Norfolk Southern and Conrail uh, scheme too. So uh, we're doing them of two sizes. And I believe LED lights and economy sound in those? Actually, LED lights and Tsunami 2 sound. Tsunami 2. That's yeah. even better, Tsunami 2. And also, one other thing I see here, we got a GP38. You want to tell me a little bit about that? Oh, yeah, the GP38-2. These are our first test shots of the GMD Canadian Pacific version with the Canadian Pacific style steps, the dynamic brake. We're also doing the uh, extra step on the battery box on the engineer side, and those were kind of spotting features for that locomotive. We're displaying that here, but there's one other thing about that locomotive. What's that? It's going to start coming with sugar cube speakers in it. Ooh, so that sounds fantastic. Yeah, some internal feed, some internal changes and external changes on that locomotive. Now, will there be two sugar cube speakers? Yes, twin, twin on a sugar cube speaker side by side. All right. Well, perfect. Thanks a lot, Chris, for taking your time okay. and sharing new products. And that's this segment for what's neat. So I'm sitting with our friend, Dave Hussey, Cannon and Company. We've seen him on so many of the prototype modeler shows that we've had in St. Louis. This is the 13th one and probably what, eighth or ninth for you? It could be, yeah, it's been quite a few and uh, it's been a good show for me, for me to come here and uh, always good to see you, Kenny. It, uh, I love it when you say that and you look terrific. Well, you are just, I mean, yeah. rock and roll. I'm getting old, but it's, it's still, you know, a, still, uh, still trying to get by. It's the best uh, hobby in the world and I've known you for so many years in that's right. And now you're making still these beautiful freight cars, and yeah. you were explaining to me that this is laser cut styrene. Right. And tell me about that. Okay, so the, the cars I'm making are basically craftsman kit 
you know, cars of laser cut um, layers of styrene laminated together to produce the different body styles, uh, whether they're a rib-sided car or a, or a embossed car, like these precision design cars I'm doing right now, or a welded side car. You know, and I combine those with parts that I've purchased from other vendors to, you know, roofs, ends, doors. I've, you know, some cases made my own parts or had parts made, or I buy this stuff and, and supply the people a complete kit or semi-complete kit. They still got to get trucks and couplers. But a lot of these cars are not available, you know, from the from the big kits. I I joke. It, right. Uh, right. Because it because they're just so unique. They're and unique. You, you're able to capture that cost right. effectively and then bring this to the modeler, right. which makes it the best hobby in the world for all of us. Now, Dave, every year you come to the show, I always see you've got something new. Tell us what's new this year. Okay. I've got about five new cars. Um, four of them are these ACF Precision Design box cars. It was a process that ACF did where they put this embossed panel in the side of the car that uh, either either stiffens the sidewall or one thing I've heard or it allows more door clearance. In any case I'm able to do that with the laser to make some of these cars and then I've also done one more new 40-foot phosphate car and uh, you know so That's those have nice. been kind of fun little little cars that uh, you know not not exactly Midwest cars but uh, you know the southern you know, folks tend to like them. That's, the a, that's Southeast a big Mars. market. I see that's the it. red scenery and the red dirt, right? That's it. That's the area. That's it. That's awesome, Dave. Well, listen, man, we love what you do. Okay. Um, and thank you so much for being on the show, and I hope okay. you can come out to the house and hang All out right. with us. Okay. We're going to do a show, uh, a podcast, yeah. the What's Neat Show. All so right. be there for that. Okay. All right, brother. Good you, Kay. Take care. Thank you. So I'm sitting here with Steve Stafiri, and this is the first time we've actually done an interview okay. with any type of historical societies, and I've noticed there's seven or eight of them of many different railroad flagships and colors in the room. But Steve, you are from the Pennsylvania Railroad Technical and Historical Society. Did I get that right? What, to a modeler or a model railroad person that doesn't know anything about what it is you guys promote, fill in the gap for us. Okay, so what we do is we promote um, uh, well, the, naturally, the Pennsylvania Railroad, to, um, uh, as, for historical reasons, uh, we, we've done support for museums, uh, we've contributed to uh, Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania for their uh, uh, Ready for the Roundhouse project. Um, uh, we have 2,800 members worldwide. Wow. 2,800 members. And how many years has this been in, you guys been doing this? 51. 51 years? Yes. So there's a lot of people you've been involved in, and the whole point is to help us modelers, what, get get the information to build the beautiful models that we see on the table at this show, would you say? You're absolutely right. We uh, we have our own station. It's actually an active Amtrak stop uh, on the, on the uh, uh, east-west corridor uh, for the uh, in Lewistown, Pennsylvania. It's an active same track, and we that's where we house our archives. And members are, are welcome to come and you know access some of our our archives. I mean, it's it's it, we have a huge huge building with with all this with all the stuff in. We've supported uh, the hobbyists in the way that we have the um, uh, Broadway Limited. We've worked with Broadway Limited. We've worked with Tangent. We've worked with with Lee English at Bowser. Nice. Uh, and I think we actually even worked with Athern and a lot of and Walters also for for some of the some of the stuff that they model for the pencil. So you're really helping the manufacturers make us better models too. Exactly. They come. They come, and we open up whatever we can give them, uh, make available. Uh, we worked with that T1 Trust that they're trying to make a complete uh, a Pensy T1. They come in for our you know, all our history and our documents. I mean, we have everything. That's got to be an absolutely fantastic and interesting group of people to socialize with. Now, you said membership. Is there is there a fee involved in belonging to something like a historical yes. society? Yes. Uh, we currently charge $40 a year, and we have 
Uh, for the forty dollars, you get four of our Keystone magazines. Unfortunately, they're not right here. Right so you now. guys make magazines too? Oh, we have an eighty-five page magazine that comes out four times a year. Wow. Uh, I mean, it's 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 a quality. It's a it's a regular regular magazine. There's no advertising in it. It's all information, and you get that with the membership. And then new members get a special bundled pack of past issues we have, another eight pack of that. So it's, it's it's quite a bargain. I mean, the magazines alone are worth the forty dollars. That's amazing. So the next time you guys are at one of these model railroad shows and you see these various historical societies set up, and it's the railroad that you're modeling, they've got maps, they've got books, they've got everything that you need that you may not find on the internet. They might have those things that you absolutely can't find, oh, absolutely. right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So Steve, thank you so much thank you. for sharing this information yeah. with us. It's very interesting what historical and technical societies do for us. Thank you. I mean, you're welcome. You're quite welcome. So I'm sitting here with David Liebach, Tangent Models, one of the most respected companies, and you've been in business for quite some time, Dave. How long yep. you been? This is going to be our 12th year right now. So we started in 2007 at the Detroit National Train Show. Wow, 2007. And the one thing I know about you is when you go home at night, you don't clock out. You have a passion for trains, Dave. Tell us about your beautiful layout. <laughs> Well, um, I do have a passion for trains. I do have a layout. My layout is uh, 1973, the Spokane area of Washington, Milwaukee Road operation specifically. Uh, Spokane's a big city. Uh, there's a small Milwaukee Road yard there. That's what I model. 1973, I have a blog for that as well uh, that I actually kind of post updates to very infrequently these days, once a year kind of thing, but at least I'm trying to do something. It keeps me motivated to actually, you know, show How, how do I, I do. find a blog? Um, it's called From the Panhandle to the Palouse. So the Panhandle of Idaho to the Palouse of Washington. Wow. From the Panhandle to the Palouse, it's uh, just Google that and it'll come up. Now, is this a new layout or something that's been going on for some time? Um, this layout's been kind of in the works for about five years now. Um, kind of researching the prototype. I had to pick a prototype that fit in my basement. I don't have the largest basement in the world and I didn't want to do something that was, you know, that didn't look right, like a large yard and a small, you know, 27 foot wall is my longest wall, which is pretty decent, but it's hard to get a yard to fit there when you think about layout design. So, Fantastic. Yeah. That's awesome. And you know what, you're at this prototype modelers meet and I bet you got some new stuff you want to talk about. Sure, yeah, I mean, this is a prototype modeler meet, so there's always something we try to bring to these, um, as well as any show we do. We do have uh, some new uh, uh, X58 boxcars, our PRR uh, design boxcar. Okay. Uh, we have those in seven paint schemes. And then last month, we also released an all new tank car as well. Um, and before the month before that, we released brand new Bethlehem guns. So we uh, are trying to do monthly releases now at Tangent, and we're doing really well with that. So That's fantastic. Now, two years ago when I interviewed you, I asked you how many cars had you gotten up to, and I congratulated you. Where are we at now? Uh, we are at 23 tools, if I remember correctly, but it's so many now I'm having trouble remembering. But yeah, I think it's 23. That's amazing. That's a testament to the fact that you know the process and you make it work. It is, and it's also interesting. Um, as a kid, I always admired like Athern for having a huge product line, and you know now I have a product line that doesn't rival Athern, but it's getting there. Like 23 models is a lot of models. It is so. absolutely. Wow, yeah. Dave, you're amazing, man. Thank you for sharing all that with us on What's Yeah, State. I look forward to seeing this episode. Thanks, and thanks to the viewers. Take care. ago on What's Neat, Gene Fusco from Intermountain. We've had you on the show and you were telling us about a company that you had where you manufactured at one time. Yep. But after you tell us about the new products here at the Intermountain table, I want to hear about your incredible Garden Railroad. Right. So tell us. Okay, so uh, first up we've announced uh, a rerun of our Square Corner 1937 AR boxcars. Uh, we're going to be doing the uh, whole set of the Santa Fe map scheme cars with the slogans, as well as a, a group of uh, other railroads that own them with various features like Viking roofs and Krakos doors. 
Uh, but what's really exciting for us is that we're finally getting production up and running from our new factories in China. Uh, very recently, we've received N-scale three-bay and two-bay uh, ACF covered hoppers. And we have also, in the past couple of months, picked up our uh, HO scale. 4650 three bay covered hoppers and we are looking forward to getting the two bays and uh, the R3018 uh, reefers very soon. Uh, factories right now are working on our locomotives, our GP16s and uh, tier fours and we look forward to seeing some production samples from the factories on those guys shortly within the next uh, month or two. Wow, that's a lot, and that's great to hear Intermountain's really got things up and running again, as everybody knows. Um, I want to talk about the fact that, and I've said this before on, on many shows, you don't go home and just stop thinking about trains. You have a beautiful outdoor <laughs> railroad. Tell us about that. Okay, uh, about four years ago, uh, I decided I wanted to try something different in the hobby, and uh, I've been an HO scaler since, you know, five years old. and. Uh, was exposed to some interesting uh, large-scale, G-scale stuff that was appropriate for the era that I'm interested in, you know, late late 60s, early 70s, and uh, decided to experiment with some outdoor stuff. And uh, I got my, my work crew together, the guys who had been helping me with the HO scale stuff, and told them, hey, we're going to go outdoors. We're going to start moving dirt around, and we, yes. started, we started building an outdoor railroad. And uh, right now, as it stands, we've got about a 1,000 feet of main line in place. We have uh, a yard. Uh, that's about 100 feet by 24 feet wide. Uh, we run 30, 40 car trains that are you know, on the awesome. order 60, 70 feet They're long. They're heavy trains, aren't they? Yes, they are. Uh, the guys have to learn, you know, real train handling skills. You can't just slam the throttle open and shut, otherwise you, you have know to that. Mess. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. So, so yeah, it's been uh, a lot of fun playing with that stuff. Man, I love it. I love it that you have a passion for the hobby and you still get to make a living in the best hobby in the world. How great is that, Gene? Can't, can't ask for anything better. <laughs> this is the best hobby in the world. Yep. <laughs> so I got my jacket off. We've done all of our interviews and you guys have spent two days at your first prototype modelers meet. What do you think? I loved it. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> you know, the models are great. They get better every year. And I love to come here and see the progress of some of these people that have been coming for seven, eight years and bringing advancements in their hobby. And I love to see the eyes of the little ones that come in and see this stuff and are just wowed by things. So oh, yeah. I, I can't wait to go to the next one next year. That's awesome, Joshua, man. Thank you very much. And close it out for us, October. This was What's Need this week for October. Thanks for watching. All of the model railroad products seen in this episode of What's Neat are available through Caboose in Lakewood, Colorado, or order online at mycaboose.com.